subscribers. I'm in disbelief. I'm so grateful. I don't think I have words that can properly express that. But thank you so much. And if you have any ideas of ways to celebrate, please, please, please let me know. And he 
says the abuse only stopped when he was kicked out of his home as a teenager. He also said that they forced him to share in their religious beliefs. They were involved in a movement called the White Berets. Um, and they are also known as the Pilgrims of St. Michael, and they were a conservative Catholic group. He was forced to attend lots of rallies with his family to get donations, and they would go house to house and knock on doors, and if someone refused to give them money, they were said to get on their knees and beg, and they believed that wealth should be evenly distributed, so they believed that those who did have wealth should share it. And, um, he was, well, people say that this was the only part of his past that he was honest about was this group, the White Berets, and he was bullied for this growing up. Now, let's talk about his sibling's account of their family life. According to his siblings and peers, his father did not drink. They said his parents never fought, and they were not abusive. His father later said in an interview that he did discipline them. However, the children say they can count the number of spankings they received on just one hand. And I know that's kind of a controversial topic, spanking is. I was spanked a couple of times as a kid, but it wasn't like a beating, like I wouldn't bruise or anything, it was just like a, a tap on the butt, so I guess th that can be different things, but yes, his father said he did discipline them, but they were not beaten or anything like that. Um, his family says that Terrio was a compulsive liar, and by the way, I'm referring to him as his last name, so... Just to clarify that, I will be referring to Roque Dario as Dario. They described him as having no empathy, and he didn't fit in with his peers. He loved to read, and he scored very highly in school. He got very good grades. However, like the rest of his family, he dropped out of school after 8th grade, and he was never kicked out of his house. He was said to manipulate situations and always victimize himself, and he was a compulsive liar for acceptance. He spent a lot of time at his town dance hall, and he brought home lots of girls from this dance hall. He was said to be very attractive and charismatic, so he got a lot of women through this dance hall. At 20 years old, he found a woman named Francine Garnier, who he wanted to settle down with. She was 17 at the time, and he thought she was the one, and so did she. So, they wanted to get married in November of 1967. At first, it was a wonderful marriage. He was going to build her a house next door to his parents' place they had planned, and after he built this house for them, next to his parents, he got a good job in Montreal as a chimney inspector. He sold their house and got good money for this 
this house that he had built next to his parents' property, and they took this money and they moved to Montreal for his job. Dario became very controlling and possessive. He only let her wear long skirts. Francine was only allowed to wear long skirts. I'm sorry, I have a hair. She claimed that he drank a lot, but that he was not a violent drunk. She said although he did drink a lot, he was very goofy and silly, and he loved to play, to play pranks. Um, she became pregnant in January of 1969, and she gave birth to her son, Roque Dario Jr. After the birth of Roque Dario Jr., Francine had a second son shortly after, who they named Francois Dario. Um, Dario starts to complain about stomach pain, and he is diagnosed with ulcers, which he blames on his father's supposed abuse. In the spring and fall of 1971, he was told that he had to go through two surgeries. Now, today, if someone were to be diagnosed with stomach ulcers, they could probably be treated with medication, depending on how severe they are, but back then, they said that he needed to have surgery which he really did not want to do. And after these surgeries, he was left with several parts of his stomach removed. Um, and this removal of several parts of his stomach led to him getting something called dumping syndrome, which is a side effect of abdominal surgeries, and this is where food gets directly dropped from your stomach to your intestines without being properly digested, and this obviously causes lots of pain and complications, and he began to stay very sick. He always was complaining about stomach pain and vomiting. His doctors recommended that he change his diet and that he could get better by following a strict diet with certain foods. However, he instead decided to use lots of alcohol and and acids to numb his pain. That made me cringe when I read it. That sounds excruciating. So, shortly after this, he becomes an angry drunk. So, it's at this point when people say they noticed a change in him. He started to become a very angry and narcissistic person, and people said that he believed he was better than anyone else. He spent hours every day going through medical textbooks, and he had to quit his job as a chimney inspector due to his intense stomach pain. He then packed up with Francine and moved back to his hometown, where he proceeded to tell people in his town that his insides were made of plastic and that he was going to die soon. And we will talk about this later, but keep in mind that he started to write a memoir of his life. And that will come into play later. So, uh, his personality continued to shift. He became very obsessed with sex. 
dancing to dress skimpy and to show off her body whenever they went out. Um, and he told her that he wanted to start a nudist colony. He started to cut down trees on his parents' property to make furniture and custom beer mugs. And this became his new occupation since he could not work due to his stomach issues. He would cut down these trees and make furniture and he actually made very good money. He would travel with this and sell these pieces um, outside of bars and dance halls on these trips to make money. And a year after moving back home from Montreal, he became very interested in small town politics. He then earned a seat on the town's council where he would propose the buildings of new playgrounds and roads. But people started to realize that they elected the wrong man because he would not suggest ways to pay for these. He would have all of these ideas without ways to fund them. And whenever he was questioned, he would throw temper tantrums and was said to act like a child. So, he was kicked off. And this is when he starts to become obsessed with power and he starts to seek positions of power. Um, he stopped bringing in money and taking his medication. Because of this, his marriage started to fall apart and Francine found out that he had been having several affairs while away on these trips to sell furniture. She confronted him about his affairs and he did promise to change. However, he did not change. He kept having his affairs and he even drank even more to numb his pain. Francine got a job to try and help support their family. So she was now working and he was not. And on February 13th, 1976, Dario meets a woman named Giselle and he immediately falls for her. Dario gets a hotel and invites her over, although they did not have sexual relations the first night. She tells him that she refuses to have sex with a married man, but she gives him her number and tells him to call her if he divorces his wife. And actually the next day, he does call her and she answers. And he tells her that he is leaving his wife immediately. And he starts to manipulate her by saying that he's dying due to these stomach complications and his wife doesn't care about this and just woe is me kind of thing. Giselle feels bad for him and she starts dating him and Dario does divorce Francine and falls head over heels for Giselle. And in the summer of 1976, when the divorce is finalized, Giselle and Dario leave town and decide to live out of a van, and they are sleeping in a tent next to the road. When they saved up enough money, they would spend it on alcohol. 
mood swings and bouts of depression. The third person in their friend group that joined was 18-year-old Francine, who was described as outgoing but insecure. They also had a 20-year-old male friend named Jock that joined with them. He invited them to live in his apartment with him and Giselle, and they all agreed. He began to pick up more followers, including a girl named Nicole, who was struggling with the recent loss of her mother. He targeted people who were insecure, confused, and were lost and looking for a purpose. On a retreat to a resort um, for his religion, he actually convinced two workers from this resort named Gabrielle and Yolanda to leave their job and come back to Quebec to live with him. Most of these new followers did live with Terrio and Giselle, and those who had jobs and were in school quit their jobs and dropped out of college to work unpaid at Terrio's seminars, handing out pamphlets. A man named Jock, another man not the 20-year-old that we discussed a second ago, so another man named Jock was intrigued, and he actually convinced his wife, Maurice, and their infant son to move in with Dario. Um, Some of the members' parents became very concerned, especially Chantel's family. They did not think she was mentally stable, and they told her that if she went a psychiatric facility, they would leave her alone if she passed. So, she did agree, and this made Dario very upset. He then realized that he did not isolate his members enough. So, after Chantel was taken to a facility, he actually left the area he was living in with his followers and opened a wellness clinic in St. Marie, which is where Chantel was in treatment. All of the members agreed to follow him here, and Dario visited Chantel and convinced her to check herself out of treatment. He then convinced all of his followers to sell their possessions to afford this wellness clinic, and he made them all wear matching robes to be equal in the eyes of God. And that was a direct quote from him. They all agreed, and he said that God was speaking to him to make him modern Moses, and he eventually even had his followers call him Moses. He promised that if they followed him, they would be saved on Judgment Day. And this brings us back to the memoir I mentioned earlier. He shared this with them, and in it, he talks about how he had special powers and a special connection with nature, saying he even got to hang out with a mama bear and her two cubs, and this is something called mystical manipulation. And he just put himself on a spiritual pedestal. On top of all of this, the group dynamics started to change. Giselle became very jealous because the women in their group were clearly in love with Terrio, and to soothe her, he agreed to marry her, and he began calling her, quote, the main wife, end quote. 
tried to impregnate the women as much as possible, and actually, when this was all said and done, he was the father of 26 children from different women in this cult. 26 children. So, Giselle had to raise all of these children by herself. And trigger warning, this is where we start to go way downhill, so please be mindful. It gets worse from here. So, Giselle had to raise all of the children by herself. And if any of the other mothers disagreed or requested to see their children, he would beat them with clubs and belts. As the children grew, so did his savageness. And there were two groups formed in this cult. There were the top people and the bottom people. So, the people that he favored and the people that he did not like. And Maurice, Jock's wife, was abused severely. And in this bottom tier, because since she was married, she refused to sleep with Terrio. Another member of the severely abused was Gabrielle. Gabrielle was a nurse, and she was a very smart woman. And Dario felt threatened by this, since he was obsessed with the medical field. He claimed to know everything about the medical scene, and would get angry when she would prove him wrong. And after getting both of these women pregnant, he made their children his personal slaves. And another trigger warning right here, please skip ahead like 20 seconds if you don't want to hear this part, but actually when, when Maurice was pregnant with his child, um... Or no, I'm sorry, Marie got pregnant with Jock's child, her husband's child, and he still wanted to claim it as his own, and he was very angry. And while she was pregnant, she tried to sneak pancakes because she was starving. Keep in mind, they were only allowed to eat boiled veggies, and this woman was pregnant. So she tried to sneak pancakes while she was starving, and he beat her so bad that she miscarried her child and got two broken ribs. I have chills. It did not get any better reading it the second time. Oh. <clears throat> okay. Anyways... forced her husband, Jock, to cut off two of her toes to prove his loyalty to the cult, and he did this with wire cutters. This was his way of showing that the men were still under his control and loyal to him as well. This became kind of a fetish of his, and he would convince the men in the cult to cut off the extremities, like fingers and toes, of the women in this cult, to prove that he was still the dominant one. During February of 1979, shocker, Doomsday did not come like he said it would, and he excuses it by saying that God's timing is different than Earth time. And they all believed him, except for Jock, the 20-year-old Jock. 
so the younger one and he actually escaped the cult he ran away but out of fear he did not snitch or let police know the location and what was happening despite being interviewed by police and several people in town Chantel's parents got back in touch with her and they offered her the same deal where she would go get psychiatric help and she denied this offer this time so they asked the police to interfere and police did so Terrio and Chantel both agree to go get psychiatric evaluations done and they both pass these psychiatric evaluations and Dario even won over the affection of the psychiatrist and spoke in a news conference claiming to be a man of God who was living in nature and he, that he was victimized by the police. So, after this, the hospital that did his evaluation even released a mental patient from the hospital into his care because they liked him that much. He was that manipulative. So, oh, this makes me mad, y'all. It gets so much worse. After this, Dario's two oldest sons, so Francine, his first wife, her two sons, they convince Francine to let them go live with Dario, their father. And after this, the mental patient who began to live with them after leaving his facility is assigned to begin taking care of the children with Giselle because she complained that she could not do it alone, which, can you blame her? So, he assigns this patient to help her, even though he is not socialized with the group, he doesn't know anybody, and he is off of his medications. Dario took away his medications once this man was released into his care. So, he continued to separate the mothers from their children because he was jealous of the attention that the children got from their mothers. So, this was especially true of the children that he didn't father like Samuel, for example, and Samuel was the son of Maurice and Jock, their infant son, who had joined with them from the beginning. When Samuel would cry, Dario would roll him in snow until he stopped crying and would force his parents to watch and if they complained or said anything, they would be beaten with the blunt side of an axe. I just, oh my gosh. Even doing my research, I was pissed. I'm sorry, I usually don't use any language on here, but I don't even think pissed is the right thing I could say. And of course, it gets worse. Like, again, please, if this gets too much at any point, please leave. I promise you, you will not regret leaving if this is too much already. Um, so, Gabrielle would hear the crying of her infant son and one day, she ran to comfort him because her 
son would not stop crying. To punish her, Dario wraps her baby in a blanket and puts him outside in the Canadian winter in a wheelbarrow, and he leaves him there. Unfortunately, this baby dies. Investigators and police are actually called after this, but they label it an accidental crib death because Gabrielle, when she was interviewed, she backs this up and says that yes, it was an accidental crib death. I'm not a mother, but I'm sure it was the fear. I wonder why she wouldn't say anything. I'm sure it was the fear. Like, these people had to have been brainwashed to put up with all of this. So, unfortunately, Dario gets away with this. After this, he makes a new rule for the cult. And his favorite women were allowed to help raise the children. Gabrielle and Maurice were not included in this. So one night, Samuel, Maurice's son, would not stop crying one night, and the mental patient that was assigned to help take care of the kids could not get him to stop crying. So he struck him in the face knocking him unconscious and putting him in a coma. <sighs> Terrio claims that he can save the baby boy by performing a circumcision. Gabrielle, as a nurse, begged him to let her help, but he did not, and Gabrielle says in a later interview, quote, he liked to play doctor a lot, but when he played doctor, he was Frankenstein, end quote. How chilling is that? So, uh, he performed this circumcision where he performed many other botched surgeries that we will get into on a wooden kitchen table, so a woodblock kitchen table. And unfortunately, this boy died during this process due to alcohol poisoning after an overdose of anesthesia. Gabrielle did not do anything because she was terrified of being next, and Samuel was buried on the property. Dario then decided that it was the mental patient's fault that Samuel had died, and told him that he needed to be punished. He claimed that since this man took a child's life, his ability to make children needed to be taken. So he castrated him. He was placed screaming on the kitchen table, and Dario was telling him that this was the only way to stop his mental illness. In an unsanitized surgery, this man's parts were completely removed. While Terrio was switching utensils, this man actually escaped and ran away, and he was found running through town with blood streaming down his legs. He made it to a hospital where workers saw that he was clearly brainwashed by somebody, and the authorities were called. Police raided the farm and the cult, and Dario was arrested. The police said that whoever wanted to leave could, but everybody stayed. And Dario was only charged with criminal negligence and sentenced to two years in prison. Only two members 
Lazarus left the cult during this time, and of these two years, he only served 14 months. The rest of the cult, after these two members left, moved into an apartment close to Dario's prison. Solange took over the head wife role because Giselle gave it up. Terrio agreed to this and promised her that she would be forever safe from his abuse. He said after he got out, he wanted to make a change and become a great society, and he was released in February of 1984. While in prison, cult members were working in Quebec, and they were making money. But after his release, they all gave up their jobs to move into the wilderness of Victoria County, located in Ontario. All of the members of the cult spoke French, by the way, and Dario was the only one in their group to speak both French and English. And in Victoria County, English was dominant. So this was another method used to isolate these people. So he used this to control them, and they rebuilt their log cabin and continued to be starved and sleep deprived. However, they ran into trouble because this land was not as good for gardening as their previous area. So they resort to stealing food from town, and they actually began to sell fresh produce and became very successful. After selling this produce, Dario convinced local businessmen to let him borrow their baking supplies. However, he never gave it back and he opened his own baking place called Ant Hill Kids Baking Company, and he opened this bakery in town. He referred to the group as the Ant Hill because of their ability to work together. The cruelty was at an all-time high. All right, now another massive trigger warning. We are going to get into more abuse that this man did. I just, I don't have words. <clears throat> we'll talk about it. He um, still was not letting anybody comfort the children except for him, so nobody could have access to the children except for him. And they were not allowed to speak unless spoken to. He would beat them, and if they misbehaved, he would force the parents to pin their children to trees with knives stuck through their clothing. And after the parents would pin them up with knives in their clothes, the mother was commanded to throw rocks at them. And if they didn't, both the mother and child would be severely beaten. The adult members of the group also got harsh beatings when they did something wrong in his eyes. He would also punish them by forcing them to have group sex. So he would make several members have sex. And he would force the kids to watch. I debated even talking about these things and it does get worse. 
somehow, so I didn't want to hide any of this from you because I feel like it is important to talk about and this was a real person who really did these things. So, it, it's just beyond me, but I don't want to hide how disgusting of a person he was, but we'll continue. Again, if it gets to be too much, please click away. Your mental health is what matters to me, okay? Please don't force yourself to listen if you are uncomfortable, because... These are very heavy topics, okay? So, he would, like I said, force the adults to participate in group sex while the kids watched. And when the kids hit puberty, they would be forced to participate. And if the adults refused to abuse the children. He would beat them with hammers. One time, Jock refused to abuse his child, and he was circumcised by Terrio in one of his botched surgeries. Members of the public at the bakery would notice that the children looked malnourished and they were covered in bruises. Social services was called and they intervened. In 1985, a social worker tried to visit the farm and this had happened before actually where a social worker would go visit the farm. But Terrio was so manipulative that he would know when social services was coming and he would clean the house, he would fix dinner, and he would actually have dinner with these social workers, with everyone else at the table. Like he made it seem like they were a loving, happy family cult. But one day, like I said, in 1985, this social worker showed up unexpected, and Terrio was furious because this was not a scheduled visit, and he chased her off the property. In June of 1985, Terrio one night drank very heavily and kept screaming that Doomsday was here. Members heard him mumbling that he was going to kill the entire cult, and then himself. Maurice, after this night, was fed up, and she was extremely worried about her children's life and decided to escape. She left in the middle of the night with her two youngest children and went to the police. Police then raided the property and took 13 children away from the property. They said that if any mother or father wanted to leave the cult and be with their children, they could without getting in trouble. And guess what? Nobody left the cult. After months and months of therapy, these rescued children began to come forward with their stories. And it's said that one of the social workers even had to leave at one point and go vomit bathroom. They said that they were forced to not only sexually abuse each other, but also the animals on their farm. And if they refused, Dario would squeeze their fingers so hard that they would break. What a, like, 
this enrages me. And I know I wasn't in this situation, but I feel like police should have been more nosy. Maybe they legally weren't allowed to. I don't know, but it's just heartbreaking that these children were born into this and what they had to go through. So, Dario actually still stayed free. He actually, as we can expect, became even more violent with the members of his cult after the children were taken. The removal of the children made his rage stronger. And he would burn these adults in his cult with welding torches, even burning their genitals and pulling out their teeth. In fall of 1988, terrible conditions arise. Solange started to complain of stomach pains, so Dario said that he would fix it because he couldn't stand to hear her complaining. He said that he was going to do surgery on her. He laid her down on the table and gave her an enema consisting of molasses, oil, and water. If you don't know what an enema is, it's a capsule that is inserted into your rear end, basically. And it's for medical purposes, but molasses, oil, and water is not for medical purposes. So he cuts open her stomach. Man, trigger warning again. He cuts open her stomach and pulls out her intestines. And he forces members of the cult to put a tube down her throat. After playing with her organs for over an hour, he gets tired and goes to bed without sewing her back up. He leaves her on the table cut open overnight by herself. Gabrielle tried to help her, but there was nothing she could do. In the morning, she was pronounced dead by Dario, and before her burial, he made the cult watch a wedding between him and her dead body. He claimed that she would be reborn because of this ritual, and later that night when she was buried, he forced members to dig her body up, and when they dug her body up, he removed all of her organs. Then he dismembered her and had relations with various parts of her body. I actually felt nauseous reading this for the first time. So not like... Okay. And unfortunately does not get better from here. He continued to have relations with various parts of her body for weeks, and the members of his cult decided they could not take this anymore, and so, in an act of rebellion, they burned the remains of her body thinking they were gonna get in trouble. Um, they were fearful, but Terrio was not phased. 
circumcision. <clears throat> then he made a necklace out of her ribs and he wore it all the time, refusing to take it off. The people at the bakery noticed that Solange was missing, but the police did not want to get involved. They said that they were fed up with him, so they turned a blind eye. <clears throat> After this, Terrio turns all of his aggression to Gabrielle. He burned her genitals, removed eight of her teeth, broke her arm, and cut of her toes off. Once a week, members of this cult had to write him a letter stating their love and devotion to him, but Gabrielle refused to do this after what happened to Solange. Her broken arm began to get infected, and one night at dinner, Terrio caught her looking down and examining her arm. When she told him, she thought it was infected and she needed help. He proceeded to grab her arm, slam it onto the table, and stabbed a knife through her hand to pin her to the table. Throughout the night, he used another knife to cut pieces of her arm away, like the skin of her arm. When he eventually got down to the bone, he severed her arm with a chainsaw right above the elbow. After this, Gabrielle runs to the nearest town to a woman's shelter. But she could not communicate because of the language barrier. And Jock is sent to convince her to return. Unfortunately, she does return with Jock because Dario promised to make her the main wife and that he would never hurt her again. That same night that she came back, Dario took a metal rod and heated it until it was red hot and placed it on the stump of Gabrielle's arm. She said that after this, she knew she had to escape. And 19 days later, she leaves in the middle of the night, going to the same shelter in Burnt River. They call the police, and she tells them that her arm was burnt in a car accident, and that Dario had to cut it off to save her. They went to interview Dario, and found nobody on the property. For two months, the police searched for him, and eventually... He was found in a hut um, on October 6th, 1989. The only people with him were his three most loyal fo followers, the original three, Chantel, Nicole, and Jacques. At this time, Chantel and Nicole were both pregnant. He was charged with one count of second degree murder and 83 counts of brutality. He was sentenced to life in prison. Thank the Lord. I just don't think I'm going to keep my opinions to myself. Lots of members 
Jews changed their identities after this and started new lives. Gabrielle and his two oldest sons wrote memoirs about their experience. But even while Terrio was in prison, his first wife Francine and Chantel and Nicole, the two pregnant girls in his cult, actually moved and stayed near the prison so that their children could visit him. These women actually opened a successful bakery. However, it was immediately closed when the community found out who these women were. On February 23rd, in 2011, Terrio was stabbed to death by an inmate named Matthew McDonnell. Matthew McDonnell stabbed him in the neck first, and then repeatedly stabbed him in other places. And after he was dead, McDonnell walked calmly to the guard station, placed the knife down, and said, quote, That piece of S is down on the range. Here is the knife. I sliced him up. End quote. Um, you can disagree with me. You are very much entitled to your own opinions, but I am very much not upset that he died the death that he did. I'm trying to think of, I don't want you guys to think I'm a violent person. I do not condone violence at all. But this man is despicable. I don't think I would have covered this case if I realized how gruesome it was. And it didn't get that, but like, it just got worse as we went on and on. One of you asked me to cover a cult case, and I googled most interesting cults, and this was actually number one, so I guess that I'm, I'm stumbling all over my words, guys. This case has me all kinds of shook up. And I think if you are not shook up by this, then something's probably wrong. But I am glad that he met the end that he did. Although I think it's terrible for his children and all of the children that did not ask to be sucked into this mess. Again, these children were born into this. They were raised into this. They did not choose this. And I know that I've I was not in these person's shoes. Clearly, he went after people who were vulnerable. He went after people who, again, were vulnerable, needed help, needed a support system. He targeted these people. But I, I still wonder why they stayed as long as they did, especially when their children were taken. Was it the fear that he had instilled in them? And again, I can't say squat because I have never been in this situation. Hopefully never will be. That is unimaginable what these people went through at the hands of this sick monster. This case got me all kinds of heated. It's one of those cases that I feel like I could talk about for hours, but this 
is already going to be an extremely long video, so I will not do that to you. Please leave your opinions in the comments. I would love to hear what 